Good morning, everybody. As you can see from the clock that came from the uh, yard sale on Campobello Island last uh, year ago this past summer, it's about uh, 9.30 in the morning, I think. Yeah. And let's see, it's Monday morning. Now we're reading Bowser the Hound, and I want to say hello to Jackson, Marjorie, and little Emily, who's a baby you won't know, but nevertheless, I'm going to say hi to her. And everybody else, and if you're still following the following the reading, uh, let us know somehow online or Facebook or something. Okay, I want to get a handle on who's still listening again. Now, Bowser and I read chapter one day before yesterday. Did I miss Matthew when I said hi? I thought I said his name, but okay. Well, hi Matthew to you too. Okay, up in Jackman. Now you may remember those who heard the first chapter. Let's see. Blackie the Crow, we saw the picture in the front of the book. Blackie the Crow was saying, as I live, that is Bowser the Hound. It looks like a, a maple syrup sugar camp. And Bowser's in the doorway. Blackie the Crow is on a tree limb up there. Got a scarf around his neck. And by the snow, we can tell it's winter time. So and you might remember from chapter one, Old Man Coyote led Bowser the Hound far from home across the green meadow through the in the old pasture and through it, I think. So, uh, let's see now. Chapter 2 was entitled, Old Man Coyote Plays a Trick. Of people who play tricks, beware, lest they may get you in a snare. You cannot trust them, so watch out whenever one may be about. That's from Bowser the Hound. There is such a thing as being too much interested in the thing you are doing. That is the way accidents very often happen. A person will get so interested in something, he would be blind and deaf to everything else, and so will walk straight into danger or trouble of some kind. Now just take the case of Bowser the Hound. Bowser was so interested in the chase of Old Man Coyote that he paid no attention, whatever, to anything but the warm scent of Old Man Coyote, which the latter was taking pains to leave. Bowser ran with his nose in Old Man Coyote's tracks and never looked either to left or right. He would lift his head only to look straight ahead in the hope of seeing Old Man Coyote. Then down would go his nose again to follow that scent. So Bowser didn't notice that Old Man Coyote was leading him far, far away from home in the country with which he was quite unacquainted. Bowser has a great, deep, wonderful voice which can be heard a very long distance when he bays on the tracks of someone he is hunting. It can be heard a very long distance indeed, but far as it can be heard, Bowser was far, far beyond hearing distance from Farmer Brown's house before an old man coyote began to even think of playing one of his clever tricks in order to make Bowser lose his scent. You see, old man coyote intended to lead Bowser into strange country and they are losing, hoping he would not be able to find his way home. Old man coyote is himself a tireless runner. He is not so heavy as his Bowser, so does not tire as easily. Then, too, he had not wasted his breath as a Bowser the Hound with a steady baying. Old Man Coyote could tell by the sound of Bowser's voice when the latter was beginning to grow tired. And he could tell by the fact that he often had a moment or two to sit down and rest before Bowser got dangerously near. So at last, Old Man Coyote decided that the time had come to play a trick. By and by, he came to a river. At that point, there was a high overhanging bank. On the very edge of this bank, Old Man Coyote made a long leap to one side. Then he made another long leap to the big trunk of a fallen tree. He ran along this, and from the end of it, made still another long leap, as long a leap as he could. Then he hid in a little thicket to see what would happen. Uh-oh. Oh no, everybody, that's the end of chapter two. We'll see what happens in chapter three next. And I'll try, to, maybe we could, I can read that chapter later this afternoon, later today, rather than wait till tomorrow. And we'll see what how the trick works, okay, on poor old Bowser the Hound. I'm starting to feel sorry for Bowser right now. And we'll see what happens. So bye-bye, everybody, and have a good day, okay? Bye.